Hello everyone, I'm High Treason. I figured I'd get a really quick video out before this year ends. I wanted to do something else, but this camera, I've got to be really quick, because I can't charge the battery anymore, and it just doesn't really work. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that at the end, as long as I've got time. But yeah, we looked at that 386, the Chips and Technologies one, and you might remember I noticed the memory was unusually fast, especially when we compared it with the VI-9 later. Well, here's why. Yeah, I don't expect the production on this one's going to be particularly good. It's been put together very quickly. So, if you've been around here a while, then you might remember we had a look at the Chips and Technology Super 386. It's a rare and obscure 386 compatible with a few notable quirks, and I won't go over here, because I'd be repeating myself. We already did a video on it. In that video, we saw how the motherboard was kind of unusual, because it had an oddly large cache tag RAM with a third chip, as well as some oddities with memory, and that this board used the Chips and Technologies peak chipset. As for the CPU, it had trouble with memory when plugged into my OptiBase shuttle motherboard. We saw the CNT again briefly when I tested out the VI9 motherboard, and again noted how the memory was unusually fast. The whole time I did have my suspicions, but now I can reveal to you that these have been proven true. In amongst the chipset registers for the peak are options for two-way and four-way memory interleaving, but their functions might not be immediately obvious. To fully understand what's going on, we need to wind back the clock to 1987, when Chips and Technologies filed US Patent US 4924375A. As the patent explains, when accessing memory, there are a few extra steps involved beyond reading and writing. So whilst waiting for those, you can move operations onto the next module, effectively skipping the pre-charge way entirely, which would explain the unusually high speed. Whilst memory interleaving has existed for a very long time, it was certainly a rare feature on PCs at that point in history. In fact, most people hadn't heard of things like dual channel memory prior to the Pentium 4 era, and thinking about it, chips and technologies were purchased by Intel, it does make you think a little bit, doesn't it? Interleaving's not the same as multi-channel memory access, largely as you're still using a single channel, but there are obvious similarities in the idea. That's really all I have to say on the matter. Perhaps there will be more of these shorter and more simplistic videos in the future, probably covering things like this which were missed in the time of a main video, because the information wasn't known or wasn't available at the time, more research might have been needed, these probably wouldn't be a replacement for the main big videos. They're probably not going to show up all that often, so feel free to ignore them if you think that they're just crap and the production shit or whatever. I doubt most of them will be as bad as this one, though, because, like I say, I'm having to put this together very quickly, and I, I don't really have unlimited access to the camera right now. Uh, I guess we'll talk about that with the dude on camera. So, there we go, that is four-way memory interleaving in 1987, or 91-92 in our case. Makes think Intel probably didn't just buy CNT for the graphics division, as people sometimes make out. Obviously, they had some other technologies Intel were interested in, and I kind of knew at the time, I knew something was up when we were looking at that machine, but I just didn't quite want to say, because I didn't have much in the way of evidence to back it up. Maybe it was a false reading, but... No, indeed, it's interleaved memory. It's not really the same as dual channel memory, but certainly a step towards that kind of thing. A very long time ago now, so yeah, C and T were ahead of the curve. Like that's uh, quite impressive. As for this camera, I am going to have to make this quick because this battery isn't going to last long, especially not as it cools down. Because I can't charge it anymore. I did buy a new camera. It was a really nice camera. Problem is, it got to the UK, and this is nearly a month ago now, and Customs sent me a bunch of forms to fill out. Oh, you need to fill these out, send us the invoices and everything. So I did, I did everything correct, and I checked and double-checked, mailed it back to them. 
they've sent me another copy of those forms to fill out the exact same ones blank no reason given there's no contact information on them other than the return address and today is the holding period's up so my camera is going back to America and I'm not going to get it and I'm going to be out of pocket I don't doubt I can get my money back but I don't think I'm going to get the cost of shipping back and I'm going to have to pay a restocking fee to the seller for the inconvenience honestly this country just disgusts me the more time I have to fucking live in it it really does just stupid shit like this hey you know maybe if you had a halfway decent economy I wouldn't have to import this crap and we wouldn't have to go through all this fucking paperwork yeah, my battery sure as shit ain't gonna have much time left, and I'm I'm just gonna get the fuck out of here, cause I'm, whatever. This year's done. It is ending on a good note, but it's not really ending on a bad note. If that's the worst thing that's going wrong, well, things could be a lot fucking worse. It's just you know whatever amount I'm out of pocket, but uh, I had some pretty good luck this year buying scrap lots and shit, so. There, that, that, that'll make up for it, I guess. Hopefully I don't really, I shouldn't really feel the, the effect of it long term. And yeah, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching, and I will see you next year, I guess. And of course, remember, don't be a screw-up, load DOS 622 up. Jeez, man. What a fucking year. And of course, goes without saying Happy New Year and all that crap. Don't forget to set a new resolution. I think mine might be 800 by 600. I haven't made my mind up yet. I kind of like the increased pixel count of 1024 by 768. Not sure it requires require further consideration. We'll see how things work out. And people never tend to keep these damn things anyway, so what's the point?